On September 7, the Jakarta to Bandung High Speed Railway, a collaborative effort between China and Indonesia, commenced its operations, reducing the travel time between the two cities from 3.5 hours to just 40 minutes. Commercial ticket sales will officially begin in early October, marking Indonesia's entry into the era of high-speed rail. The Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway is Indonesia's and Southeast Asia's first high-speed rail project, utilizing Chinese technology and standards throughout its entirety. The total length of the line is 142.3 km, with a maximum operating speed of 350 km per hour. The construction of the Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway posed significant challenges due to the complex geological conditions along the route. The project carefully selected its path to avoid landslides, volcanic areas, and other adverse geological conditions to the greatest extent possible. It also incorporated innovative designs, including bridges with superior seismic performance, ballastless tracks for a smoother ride, and advanced train control systems for enhanced functionality. The project was built to high standards and includes 13 tunnels and 56 bridges. In 2015, Japan spent 83.1 billion yuan to grab India's first high-speed rail project Mumba, a metabod from China. Construction began in 2017 and was planned to be delivered in 2022. However, only 10 kilometers have been built so far, and the total project construction budget cost has increased by 65.4 billion yuan to 148.5 billion yuan. At the same time, the delivery time will be delayed until at least 2028. In stark contrast, Indonesia's Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway. At the beginning, both China and Japan participated in the bidding for this project. On September 2, 2015, China defeated Japan and won it. As of August 4, 2022, all the tunnels and culverts of the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed rail line have been completed, and the completion of civil works exceeds 91%. And it was successfully opened in September this year as expected. Japan's construction of India's high-speed rail repeatedly hit obstacles, while China's construction of Indonesia's high-speed rail is smooth sailing. How crazy Japan was in order to grab orders, how depressing it is now. In addition, the Indonesian government present the construction results of the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed rail to the world at the G20 summit. In such a world-class international conference, Indonesia's presentation is undoubtedly a global publicity for China's high-speed rail technology. It can also be seen from this that Indonesia is satisfied with the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed rail. Fortunately, Indonesia chose China at first. So why did Indonesia choose China instead of Japan? What is the progress of the Hyperloop network that China will build to connect the entire ASEAN? Hi. Welcome to Hot Topics Time. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel. Okay, let's continue the topic we are talking about. It is not easy for China to win the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed rail, and the biggest challenger is also Japan. However, after several rounds of bidding negotiations, in 2015, the Chinese company offered Indonesia a condition it could not refuse. The first is that the price is cheaper than Japan. Japan's bid price is about 50 million US dollars slash KM, which can provide all the mortgage loans for Indonesia, the annual interest rate is as low as 1%, and the construction period is 8 years. China's bid price is more than 30 million US dollars slash KM, providing 75% of the unsecured loan, the annual interest rate of 2%, the total construction period of 3 years. China is bidding lower because the cost is lower. China has the world's largest high-speed rail network and the world's largest supporting enterprises. On the basis of scale, the construction cost of China's high-speed rail is much lower than that of Japan. After the full-scale construction started in June 2018, 
the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway was also affected by the COVID 19, and the construction period was delayed. But it was completed on October 16, 2022, and the overall progress still far exceeded the Japanese bidding plan. The second is to jointly build roads. The ownership of the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway is not entirely owned by Indonesia but is jointly funded and held by China and Indonesia. Indonesia will invest 60% and China will invest 40%, sharing the rights and interests of this railway. The third is to export a full set of technologies to help Indonesia realize the localization of high-speed rail manufacturing. Seeing this, some Chinese people will be worried, if you transfer technology to Indonesia, will Indonesia grab Chinese market in the future? Well, don't have to worry about this. The highest speed of China's high-speed rail technology exported to Indonesia is 350 km per hour, and the daily operating speed is 300 km per hour. But China's Fuxing has a top speed of 400 km per hour and a daily operating speed of 350 km per hour. This shows that China's high-speed rail technology is constantly iteratively upgraded. This is because China has the world's longest high-speed rail network, and the huge market demand is enough to support the continuous technological innovation of China's high-speed rail, which other countries do not have. More importantly, for China, technology export is not for making money, what China wants to build is a hyperloop network that connects the entire ASEAN. Let me show you a China ASEAN high-speed rail plan. In this high-speed rail plan, the China Laos Railway has been opened, the first phase of the China Thailand High Speed Railway is under construction, and the second phase of the China Thailand High Speed Railway is also planned. After the two railways are completed, the China Laos Railway and the China Thailand High Speed Railway will be connected, starting from Kunming, China, and ending in Bangkok, Thailand. In the Bangkok extension, there is also the Malaysia-Singapore high-speed rail. This section has not started construction due to the change of government in Malaysia. However, Malaysia has no choice. Thailand in the north and Indonesia in the south have chosen China's high-speed rail, and Malaysia, which is sandwiched in the middle, can only connect to Thailand in the north and Indonesia in the south by choosing the Chinese high-speed rail. In other words, the entire ASEAN high-speed rail may really be contracted by China. Moreover, it is not only in Indonesia and India, but in fact, the Sino-Japanese high-speed rail battle is being played out in several countries in Southeast Asia. The Philippines has been planning for many years to build three major railways in the country. Not long ago, the Philippines basically confirmed that the best partner for this project is China. However, some Philippine lawmakers made discordant voices, calling for Japan to be chosen as a partner for cooperation. Is China really the best choice for the Philippines? In fact, the Philippines is currently undecided on the issue of cooperation with China, which is in sharp contrast with the neighboring countries that are actively cooperating with China. Indonesia have the first high-speed rail in Southeast Asia after receiving trains from China. At present, the Jakarta Bandung High-Speed Railway Indonesia has been opened, the original three-hour drive will be shortened to 40 minutes. In addition, the China-Thailand Railway and the Hungary-Serbia Railway are also under construction. Although Vietnam has disputes with China from time to time, the country's first railway built by a Chinese company has brought tens of thousands of jobs to the country. Because of China's infrastructure, Laos has become a transportation hub extending in all directions from a country with the lowest degree of industrialization in the region. Besides, the Philippine domestic terrain is complex, with many plateaus and hills. It is known as the land of a thousand islands, which is a huge challenge for the construction of railways. If you want to build a high-speed rail in such a complex situation, it is no exaggeration to say that this kind of technology is only available in China. With the implementation of the Belt and Road Initiative, 
China's railway construction is also favored by more and more countries. Now, let's take a look at Japan's high-speed rail project in India. The railway connecting Mumbai and Ahmedabad is 508 kilometers long. Since construction started five years ago, only about 10 kilometers have been constructed. Japan has signed an additional loan of about 4.92 billion yuan with India. Japanese netizens are also strongly opposed to this. This railway has become a sore point for both sides, an unfilled pit. An executive of a Japanese international company said in an interview, in order to compete with China, Japan deliberately lowered the price and won the project. Now the opening time has been postponed from 2023 to 2028. The people of India don't know when they will be able to get on the high-speed train, and Japan doesn't know how much money they have to fill in. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news, we will see you in the next video.